So, here we are, back in Skyrim in 2024, playing the game's fifth and hopefully last release, Skyrim Anniversary Edition. And I'm revisiting it to give you the ultimate start guide for both new and seasoned players. If you follow this guide, you should have two player homes, one of the best horses in the game, Atronach staffs, great weapons to start you off, and 1,100 gold each and every day as a passive income, so you'll never have to to worry about gold throughout your entire playthrough and throughout this I won't level up and will stay at level one and I aim to make this an easy and well structured guide as possible for you to follow. Okay, a few tips for new players. Loot as much as you can, especially at the beginning, as we have specific things we'll need to buy, and we'll need the money to buy them. I will leave the full list of items we will need in the video description, so if you see any of them, you'll know to grab them, but don't worry if you don't see them. Uh, where were we? Oh yeah, looting. Make sure you check weight to value, so hypothetically speaking, if you're getting close to carry weight and you find a great sword worth 100 gold and weighs 20 pounds and you find 10 wine bottles worth 10 gold each but they only weigh half a pound each the wine bottles are the better bet as they'll have the same value as the sword but with a fraction of the weight and make it a priority to pick up all ingredients everywhere you go and store them safely in one of your homes. Alchemy can play a much bigger part in this game than many people realise. And oh yeah, same goes for soul gems, grab them every opportunity you get. Now at some point you'll uh, be asked to go to Whiterun and warn the Yarl about the dragon attacks. I strongly advise you don't do that straight away. It can wait and it doesn't affect the story at all if you don't go. If you decide to go to the Yarl, you'll be dealing with constant dragon attacks which can be an utter pain in the hole. So put that one on the back burner, uh, but it's your choice. Okay, back to the guide. So, when you're escaping from Helgen, you have to choose between Hadvar or Raylof. For the purposes of this guide, I'd suggest you pick Hadvar, he's the Imperial by the way, uh, to escape with. Make sure you pick up one of the brooms, this will be handy later on, don't sell it. And don't forget to lose everything you can, and remember the weight to value ratio I mentioned before. So, just fight your way through Helgen and follow Hadvar down to Riverwood way down to Riverwood you will come across three standing stones called the Guardian Stones. You'll have the chance to activate one. Don't worry if you make a mistake or you have a particular skill that isn't covered by your chosen stone. You can come back at any time and choose a different one and you can do this as often as you like. Each stone improves its own particular skills progression 20% faster. Uh, the Thief Stone covers Light Armour, Lock Picking, Pickpocket, Sneech, Speech, Archery and Alchemy. The May Stone covers Ultra Conjuration, Destruction, Enchanting, Illusion and Restoration. The Warrior Stone covers Block, Heavy Armour, One-Handed, Two-Handed and Smithing. And after you've chosen your stone you might as well go fishing so keep going towards the lake and you'll see a hunter's camp. Beside it you'll find a fishing spot with a rod book and fishing supplies. Read the book which will start a quest, equip the rod which is found in your weapons inventory and activate the fishing surprise. You can get all sorts when you're fishing, from fish, which can be food or ingredients, to junk, weapons, or even some really decent enchanting stuff uh, from time to time. Uh, so I'd recommend always stopping to fish when you find a spot on your travels. You just never know. Oh, and if you follow the fishing quest line, you can get some pretty decent stuff if you see it through to the end. Eventually Hadvar takes you to his uncle Alvor who is Riverwood's blacksmith. Complete some dialogue with Alvar and ask him for supplies. He will open his inventory and give you a load of stuff. Also a lot of the stuff around has a steel tag removed so go around the house and take as much as you can. Uh, but before you do make a quick save as it is really easy to take stuff marked steel by accident. More importantly, the pile of iron and steel ingots which spawn next to the workbench outside of Alva and Sigrid's house can be taken freely. Don't take them. We will be coming back here and it will save you using up your carrying capacity. Now go to Riverwood Trader opposite Alva's house and sell absolutely everything you don't need. The Riverwood Trader is still open. Trinkets, odds and ends. 
After you sold everything, look for Fandel, who's a wood elf thief living in Riverwood. He's pretty important for this start guide, so talk to him and agree to take a forged love letter from uh, or to Camilla Valerius. Quick save in case you make a mistake and go to the Riverwood Trader to speak to Camilla and follow the dialogue to and betrays Fenn. Go back to Fandel and tell him you've done as he's requested and ask him to follow you. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, Fandel is an archery trainer and if you don't have the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch uh, installed, which I recommend you do by the way, uh, but if you don't, you can pay Fandel for archery training, go his, into his inventory and take the money back and buy more training, rinsing and repeating. Um, if you do have the patch installed, this isn't possible. But go into his inventory anyway and take the key to his house. Then go to his house and take absolutely everything that's not marked still. Go to the Riverwood Trader and sell it all. Okay, so make your way to Whiterun Stables and speak to the hostler. Ask if you can buy a wild horses map, which will cost you around 250 gold. And once you have that, you can now tame up to seven wild horses. Uh, but for now, we'll take the closest and easiest here at Whiterun. I uploaded a video quite a while back showing all the locations if you want to check it out. Now normally you pay a thousand gold for a stable horse, but the wild horses have over twice as much health and stamina as stable bought horses, and far more importantly, they are essential. I hate it when my poor horse gets killed by some random bandit or a dragon or some such. You don't. And now we're in White Run, I want to start doing some quests that will give us a, a real boost later and earn a bit of gold to boot. And we'll start off with Arcadia. So when you enter White Run, head all the way up to Dragon's Reach. Before you enter, make sure you do a quick save. Head on up to talk to Farangar. Now, I am, yes. at some stage, ah, you will me. probably be engaged Speaking in dialogue by Irelith. Do not talk to her. Simply escape out of the dialogue and continue with Farangar. So as soon as a dialogue becomes available, ask sure him if he's the only wizard in town. And at some point, he will then remember he has some Look, frost salts he had promised to pick up for Arcadia and agree to deliver them for him and head back to Arcadius and give her the salts and she will then hand you some pretty decent potions as payment but more importantly most of the various ingredients and potions in a shop are now free to take but not all so as before make sure you quick save so you don't accidentally pick something up that's marked for stealing then go around the shop taking everything that's free to you you can even go into other parts of the house if you want now we're really looking for bliss warp now hopefully she's got some for you to take in the shop if so that's great make sure you grab it and once you're done ask her what she has to sell and buy any and all bliss what she has. Next up is Bethella in the Hag's Cure. So go to the White Run Stables and take a carriage to Markarth. Head to Markarth Stables and speak to Banning. Ask him how long have you, have you been training dogs? He will respond with that reminds me I was going to deliver some dog food to keep to the keep. Spiced beef their favourite and you respond with I can deliver that for you. Now we're heading that way anyway so he might as well get an easy 250 gold. Now's the hard part. When you get to Barkar's gates, I would strongly suggest you equip the flame spell in your left hand and the best weapon you have in your right. Once that's done, hit save. Enter the city and go as fast as you can to the right, where you see a Breton called Waylin about to assassinate Margaret. Hit him with everything you've got, making absolutely sure you don't hit anyone else or the guards will attack you. You may have to reload your save quite a few times to do this, it's quite difficult. But once Waylin's dead, loot him, then go and talk to Margaret and she'll give you a pretty decent necklace for you to sell. Next, we head down to the Hag's Cure and speak to Bethella. Now, ask her about the shop's unique name and eventually she will offer you a job to deliver a potion to the steward and just say, I'll make sure he gets it. Then head up to Unstone Keep and find Steward Rerek, deliver the potion and collect your reward of 250 gold. After that is done, head out of the throne room and make sure the Deliver Spice Meat quest is activated and go and deliver that round the corner to the Understone Keep Kitchens. Speak to Voda, give her the dog Spice Meat and collect another 250 gold. Easy peasy. 
And now all we have to do is go back to the Hag's Cure. Now most of Bethelna's ingredients are free to you now. Uh, again, make sure you quick save before you accidentally take anything marked as steel and then just take everything you can. Ask to see what she has for sale and buy any blister wart, if she has any of course. And our final alchemist quest, I promise you, uh, you simply take the carriage to Solitude and once in the city, head to Angeline's Aromatics to and speak to Angeline. Traveler, She'll start her quest with one of the following. You're a, You're a traveler, correct? Have you been to Whiterun? Or it's good to see a fresh face. You wouldn't happen to have come from Whiterun, would you? Really you must answer with so actually been. yes. Then she'll say, my daughter Fura was assigned to Whiterun after she joined the Imperial Army. I was hoping you might have met her. I haven't heard from her lately. I've tried talking to Captain Aldis, but he's been of no help. And you answer with, I haven't met her, but I could try to get some uh, more information. Now head up to Castle Dua Courtyard uh, to speak to Captain Aldis. Quick save before you start talking to him. It's worth noting that if you're wearing the Stormcloak armour you looted from Helgen, he will scold you and there'll be no dialogue for Angeline's quest. So make sure you change your clothes. Go through all the dialogue options till he tells you General what happened to Angeline's daughter. Now return to the shop and give Angeline the news of her daughter. And as before, most of the ingredients are now free to you. Again, make sure you quick save before you accidentally take anything marks as steel. And finally, ask to see what she has for sale and buy any blisterworths if she has any available. And now we need to head back to White Run Stables and once we're there we're looking for a potential player home called Tundra Homestead. We're not going to buy it but use a little garden at the back. So hop on your horse and head over there. By now you should be getting the idea that Blister Ward is pretty important and I managed to get seven from the Alchemist. You may get a few more or a few less but anyway that won't be nowhere near enough. Once all your Blister work. Uh, once you've done that, fast travel back into Whiterun and wait for a day. Now head back to Tundra Homestead and harvest the blisterwort. Make sure you harvest and don't clear the planter. Anyway, you get four for each one you planted, so my seven gave me 28. I then planted the last empty soil plot, giving me eight blisterwort growing. Uh, for what it's worth, every subsequent harvest takes three days, not the initial one. Now this is a great start and don't forget once this startup is done head back over there and plant any other ingredients you may need as we'll have plenty of blister wart. So normally I'd go to the College of Winterhold next however that will entail us buying greater or grand soul gems which are really expensive and we're level one and we'll be needing all our gold for something else. So we'll get Mere Watch first which so happens to have most expensive stuff we need already there and free. And it may be a good idea to open up the map and put a place marker over Mere Watch to help you find it. We'll be needing to take a carriage to Morthal. When you arrive, I would suggest you hotkey flames, your best weapon, and health and magic potions. Quick save just before you get to Mere Watch, as you'll be taking on a Churus, which is quite a dangerous enemy at our level. Sadly, Fandel has never proved much use in this particular fight, and it's essential that we keep him alive. So, if you win the fight and he's dead, you're going to have to reload and do it again. But hopefully that won't be the case. Once you've defeated the Churus, go to Han's body, take and read his journal, and that will start the quest. Outside the front door, there's a seal or shadow door. Use flames on it and a little bunny will appear and hop into some type of portal and open mirror watch for you. And now it's all yours. Probably the best player home for crafting in the whole game. If you're interested, I did a review video on this if you want to go and check it out. As I said before, this is a really fantastic home. Though I wouldn't bring a family to live here, that Churros respawns and there's tons of spiders around as well. I suggest you keep it as your crafting place and get a family home somewhere else. Now first things first, head up through the portal to the gallery and you'll find a little garden with 11 growing spots. Plant 11 blisterwort. Once you've done that, go back downstairs to the bed and sleep for 24 hours. Once you've had your little nap, go back up to the gallery and harvest all the plants. Uh, with my original seven blisterwort from the alchemist, I now have 57, which is more than enough. In fact, we only need 38. The rest we can keep uh, for potions later on or sell. Personally, I'd keep them for potions. 
you can now use the planting saws at Tundra and Mirwatch for whatever you like from now on. But there was also another reason for coming here first, and that is there's a few greater and grand soul gems, iron, orichalcum and corundum ingots free to make our astronaut staffs and for smithing later on. So make sure you grab these. Next we're going to get two staffs that are good for any build and any style of play and will be useful throughout your entire playthrough. So we're going to take a carriage to Winterhold and head to the college. But before you go, make sure you take one corundum ore or ingots and one orichalcum ore or ingots. The orichalcum may not be necessary as you usually find one in the college, uh, but just take it just in case. And you'll need two greater or grand soul gems or one of each, it really doesn't matter. Be some this void salts near the alchemy table, so grab I'll them if they're there. If not, time. you should find a one in your college room. Mm -hmm. And bring the broom you should have picked up in Helgen. Once at Winterhold, go to the college where you will meet Feralda, go through the yeah, little dialogue and little test, and do buy her spell. At 30 gold, any spell is a deal. Once that's done, she'll send you up to the college to meet Mirabel Irvine. Um, she will Welcome then take the you on an annoying little tour, ending up in your college room. Another this will start the quest where you have to speak to Tolf Deer. You can safely leave well, that for later. Uh, the room itself is pretty good with loads of safe storage. There's also a few ingredients free for you to take. Make sure you take them. In particular, we're looking for void salts. You also get to use the college's alchemy and enchanting tables, where again, you get free ingredients and some soul gems. Sadly, not the grand ones or greater ones. If you didn't get any void salts, you can wander around the college and try to steal some if you find any, but make sure you quick save before you take anything. Failing that, you can try the alchemist. There's only 21% chance of them stocking some, so you may have to reload a few times. Personally, I've always got one in the college room and hopefully it'll be the same for you. Now for the main reason why we're here, and that's getting two Atronach staffs. Head to the Hall of Countenance, which is the same tower as the alchemy and enchanting rooms, and head to the Midden through a trapdoor underneath the stairs. Once you're in there, I'd suggest you equip flames and your best weapon, hotkey health and magic potions, then make a quick save. If you still have your novice hood, and you should, it might be a good idea to put it on. Head on down to the forge. Uh, just before you get there, you'll find a skeleton with an enchanted dagger nearby. It's quite difficult to see, uh, so make sure you grab it. The best way to deal with the ice wraith is to stand around halfway up the stairs and hit it with flames. I didn't have enough magical potions, so I got its health down as far as I could and then attacked it with a sword, which is pretty dicey at level one, to say the least. Once the wraith has been dealt with, continue down to the forge where you'll find some fire salts, a broom, a ruby, and the Atronac Forge manual. I'll leave a link to all the Atronac Forge recipes in the description below. But for now, head to the forge. In the offering box, place fire salts, a broom, a corundum ore or ingots, and a greater or grand soul gem, and activate the pull bar. Next, open the offering box again and place void salts, a broom, an orichalcum or or ingots, and a greater or grand soul gem. And again, activate the ball bar. And voila, you now have two weapons that you can use through your entire playthrough, whatever type of character you're playing as. I just can't emphasize enough how good these are, especially at low levels, but they remain an important part of your weapon inventory at all levels. And don't forget to grab all the ingredients on the way out. Once you're out, make a hard save. Okay, so we've arrived at the point we've been working towards, which is an abandoned farm, east of Rorick said, and it's a real game changer. You can start this quest by either keep asking an innkeeper for work until they give you the bounty quest, Restless Spirits, 
or you can go straight to Golden Hills Plantation itself, which is what I'd recommend. This quest can be a bit buggy, so I'll only be doing a quick overview in this video as I'll be putting out a full and detailed guide as soon as I get a chance, and I strongly recommend you watch it. But before we go to the farm, you'll need the following. 38 Blisswort, which we should already have. 16 Iron Ingots, you should already have five from Alva, plus any you picked up at Mirwatch or looted. The rest you can buy from Alva, 14 gold each. One Crondom Ingot, which you should have picked up at Mirwatch. If not, buy one from Alva for 80 gold. You still need 21 firewood and 12 quarried stone. Luckily, these can both be found free on the farm itself, right next to the farmhouse. You'll also need some straw, Maybe so fast travel to something. White Run and head over to Bellathor's General Goods and buy it there. Or if you're ready in Riverwood, treasure. try the Riverwood Traders opposite Alva's Blacksmiths. Finally, you'll also need a wood axe and a pickaxe. A wood axe can be found by the chopping block on the farm, but you'll have to find or buy a pickaxe, unless I missed one somewhere. Uh, these can be picked up in mines, but seeing as you're ready in Bellethor's shop or the Riverwood Traders, uh, buying straw anyway, I would just buy one there if you don't already have one. So all in all, the total gold costs at this stage is around 1350 to 1450 gold, depending on what you've managed to pick up and sell on the way. But don't worry, if you haven't got that, you can get the farm to pay for itself, but you will definitely need around 850 gold to get it rolling. Now go to Alva's Forge in Riverwood, pick up your free iron ingots and buy any extra ingots you need. Go to the forge and craft two hinges, one lock, three iron fittings and seven nails. Uh, FYI, you get 10 each time you craft nails, so don't craft seven times. Just the once will be enough. The quest itself is very easy. Just head east out of Rorick's Head, a short way, and you'll see the farm. As you arrive at the farm, a ghost will attack you. Now, after dealing with it, read the torn page next to the body of Erval. Simply follow the quest line until you speak to Rin at the end and say your family can rest in peace now and he will reply Thanks a lot here. Take this for all your hard work and the farm's yours now go and chop 21 firewood and quarry 12 stone The next little quest is where you'll be asked to plant 10 crops Ignore that as you might as well plant the whole 38 blister warp. You can have to do it at some point So it must as well be now then you're going to need a steward, and that's why we brought along Feyendale. You can use any NPC that is eligible to be a half-fire steward here on the farm. So if you want someone else later on, you can let Feyendale go and recruit that other person. The dialogue may not come up, so you may have to take him inside the farmhouse to talk to him there, and hopefully the dialogue will then appear. Once he's your steward, then get him to hire farmhands for 500 gold. Apparently, these not only harvest your crops, but also boost your profits, so most definitely worth having. Uh, you'll then be asked to build an animal pen, but we've collected all the materials, so build everything. Then you're going to be asked to talk to your steward about purchasing livestock, buy as much as you can. If you've been following this guide, you should have enough money. Then you'll be asked to wait a few days and go and ask your steward for the day's profits. I think you can sleep in the farmhouse, but just to make sure, I'd recommend going to sleep in Mirwatch for around 10 days. Then come back to speak to Fandel and ask him for the profit. After that, you'll be asked to go and collect stuff from the pantry. I just go and take one thing and leave the rest there. No point carrying it around with you. And that finishes all the farming quests. And you should have enough money to fully furnish your farm. So go ahead and speak to Fandel to fully upgrade it. If for some reason you don't have enough, uh, go to sleep for however long it takes to get the money. And there you have it, a fully functional player home with all crafting facilities and a passive income of around 1,100 gold every day. As I said before, I'll be doing a full walkthrough on this farm as there are a few bugs that may appear that you have to deal with and some choices that you have to make. So I strongly recommend you watch that. Next, we're going to get a goat 
and this goat is so often overlooked by players but she is unbelievably useful especially at the beginning when you're grabbing as much loot as possible and I'll explain why later. So Hilda is from the Pets of Skyrim from sick? Creation Club which is included you in the anniversary edition and find. seeing yeah, as we're already at the course. farm we'll just pop over to Rorikstead and head to Cowflop Farmhouse to speak to Halvar sure. who's one of the farmhands. And he will then sell you Hilda for 200 gold. After buying her, go and speak to her and ask her to follow you. Whatever you do, don't take off a pack. At this point, she will act as your pet and can be told to do various things, such as wait at a specified city or one of your houses. And she can even come with you, even if you have another pet. At this point, you'll be prompted to read Halvar's journal to find out more about the goat. So go and do that. Anyway, so why get Hilda? Well, she has the ability to carry 100, which is bumped up to 140 with the animal pack. That's why you don't take it off. That in itself is great. However, you may not want a goat with you in the dungeon, but she also has a teleportation spell to summon her. So once you collect enough stuff, you can summon her to you, load her up and send her home again. But, as we all know, pets and followers can sometimes get stuck in caves or crypts, or simply just take an age to get home. With Hilda, you just go home. If she's not there, you just summon her with a spell. Just don't forget to take all the stuff from her pack. You don't want to summon her later on and find she's got absolutely no room for your loot. In my opinion, Hilda is a must-have, and even when you don't want to use her, she's nice to have wandering around outside your home. No downside to her at all. Next we'll be getting a unique sword called Bola's Oathblade. This sword has the same damage as a scimitar, which is 11, and the same weight of 10, which is pretty decent. But it also has dual enchantments. Uh, the first is stamina damage of 25 points and fear of 12 points for 30 seconds. To get this, we're going to Bloated Man's Grotto. This is very close to Barley Dark Farm and is on the road from White Run to Rorikstead. You'll be riding past it on the way to Golden Hills Plantation, so you may want to discover it on your way, or indeed you can get the sword first if you like. Now, this place is a little above our pay grade at level one, so make sure you make a save before you go in, as we will possibly be taking on bears, wolves, and squiggles. Now take the main path down where you'll fight a few wolves and one spriggan. Once you've dealt with them, go to the shrine and get the sword and any loot you can find. Once you've done that, I suggest you come back the way you come in and not carry on. If you do, you'll definitely have to fight more wolves, bears and two spriggans this time. And that's a tough fight for nothing really to gain, uh, apart from a few ingredients. And now you have a pretty powerful weapon that is dual enchanted and fully upgradable with a steel smithing perk. Though it does eat through soul gems, so don't forget to recharge it. And we've finally arrived at the last piece of this guide, and that's to get a ranged weapon. There will be times when you'll need one, whether you're playing as an archer or not. Now this is entirely optional, as we'll have plenty of money, so we can buy one if we like. But we want to get one of the best crossbows in the game, and that's the Daedric crossbow. It's very unlikely to appear for you at low level, so we're going to steal one. Now, before you do this, make sure you have plenty of lockpicks, then head over to Solitude. Go to the Fletchers and wait till around 2 in the morning. Crouch and make sure you're not seen, then do a hard save. After that, pick lock the door. And just simply sneak around the shop stealing whatever you want. You should get at least two crossbows here. I always get a glass one, uh, plus another type, plus arrows and other stuff. To get the Daedric crossbow, we'll have to pick an expert lock, hence we'll need plenty of lock picks. Uh, make sure you're still undetected and make a quick save and pick the lock. Now you may have to reload your quick save a time or two, but eventually you will get there.
The only problem you may have is oh, the bolts for your crossbow. True. Now, until I you join the Dawn Guard, they're actually, quite difficult to find, to usually only yeah. in Dwemer ruins. However, you can simply go to the same Fletcher and Solitude and buy them. Don't worry about it, you're loaded. And voila, you have one of the most powerful ranged weapons in the game. It can be improved, but that's for another video. Now, exit the shop and go home and store the other stolen crossbows. This is important because if you're thrown in jail, all stolen items will be confiscated and you don't want to lose them all. Now, this crossbow is pretty damn good. It's quite heavy at 20, but it has a whopping damage of 28. So definitely worth getting in my opinion, especially when it's free. And there you go, you have two great homes. One is the best crafting base in the game, a passive income of around 1,100 gold a day throughout your playthrough. All you have to do is to remember to pop over and pick it up from time to time. You'll be getting free ingredients from the alchemist and college. Just don't forget to regularly go and pick them up. The alchemists respawn every two days and the college every 12 days, I believe. You'll also have two powerful weapons, a great sword and an iconic one to boot. The crossbow is one of the most powerful ranged weapons you can get. The only one stronger is the dragon bone crossbow and this will easily see you through the game. You'll also be having two powerful Atronax staffs that are absolutely invaluable, especially when you're at low level, but are still really useful throughout your playthrough. And you'll have one of the best horses in the game with far more stamina and health than most of the other horses and with a bonus she can't be killed. Lastly, but most certainly not least, we get Hilda the Goat that can carry all that beautiful excess loot we love so much. I hope you found this useful. See you later. Love you.